everything you want to. I don't see how they manage to get all that, and I know, I know them, and they're living just like me. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they got some light on the way they live. When you go to school, you get to do homework and stuff. Do you, do you do it by candlelight? At home, no, we did it with the lamp. Mom put the lamp on the table, and we did our homework. But we had to do it early in the evening so we could see. But when night come, by the time we get ready to eat that, Coffee and bread or sweet and water and bread if they didn't have no more jam lie left, well we'd be finished doing what we had to do. See? So it was rough. When you got up in the morning, did you have chores to do? Yeah, well, you had to um, make up your bed, put your clothes back where they was for to go to school tomorrow. You know, we didn't have uh cabinets and stuff like people got to put them in. Now you put them on the hanger, or you just hang them like that. Just hang them on the back of the door, and you close the door, or everything all straight. Put the uh, put the, the, the bed spread or the sheet, whatever we had, because she used to take, she used to make um, a bed spread or something like that for the, for the week time. She bought a bed spread. If she didn't embroider it or something, she would bought it, but most of the time, she would, the sheet would be the bed spray that would be made out of little little pieces of cloth. It wasn't a quilt. It would just cover the bed and made it look decent. But as time went on, things got better, and people did better, because by the time I was 15, people would borrow each other's spread, borrow them up. If, it, if we have a good mop, you borrow them up. And you go get the mop, and they say, I just finished scrubbing the kitchen. Here's the mop. You give them the mop, and they go there. And they, the mop might go down the street, the whole street, with people scrubbing. Now, we had hard floors. You know what hard floors is. They had hard floors, and they had sacks. But Mama used to sick her sacks, and she would hem all around them. Sometimes she would pull it out like that and put one down by the floor. Every time I look at that little thing over the, what you call it on television? Oh Lord, that was it's an old story where they had a wedding wheel. I know the little girl in there. I said, now you know this is just the way our house was one time. We didn't have uh, window pans. They had the, uh, the 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 windows like your clothes, like that house next to this, your clothes. But we didn't have window pans. So when Mama would nail a, a, a sheet, a old blanket, a quilt up there, and put curtains over it in the winter time. It would be cool, but it wasn't cool as it is today, and we got all of that in the house. But it would be cool, and well, to have fire half. We all sat around the fire half in the back, because we could pop corn back there. We take the we take old sheet or whatever she had, and she give us, and we put it on the floor, and we take the popcorn, throw it in the fire, and it pop out. That's mine. That's yours. <laughs> That's how we play. <laughs> And uh, well, we put potatoes in the ashes. Then we uh, have potatoes, because mama would put potatoes in if the fire was made in the other room in the fire here. You had to watch it because it pops. And then she'd pull them all out with the, uh, with the poker and put them on the side. And that'd be potatoes, a big sweet potatoes. So. so. Did, uh, when you were growing up, the community was pretty tight. All the neighbors knew everybody. Uh, I guess it was just like they didn't know you, but they did know you. You know, some of them was real nice. Seemed to me they was pretty nice. I would say some of them we didn't know any better, so they, I would say it was nice to us. Now, if you was, if you had got in trouble, would your neighbors tell on you? Well, I don't know about that because we never yeah. could get out the yard to go to fence was too high. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing we could see, was see out the yard when we come when we come in, we close the gate and the cow bell ring and we all in. Mama's everybody home, yeah, everybody home. We had a cow bell on the gate. Um, so what did you do? At, how long did you go to school? Well, I went till I got to the seventh grade, but I was old when I got there because Mama had children and it was always somebody sick, and Grammy would keep me home to help her with the children because she would be washing for out. You see, she had to have the clothes ready on certain days. 
and we used to go pick up the clothes for her, bring them, bring them back for her on Friday, I think, we pick up the clothes. Or Thursday, Friday or Thursday, not Saturday, because that's when they would appear. And wasn't paying nothing much to go pick up her. Then long years after I got old, we found out a lot of people would get clothes from their neighbor and put in there so sometime. You see, you know they got some more clothes in those clothes, but they was they was getting in their clothes, putting them in. That's what they was doing. I'm telling you, just like it was, people washing iron for it, but they caught hell. But they didn't realize, and it just went on. Uh, if you had anything that, if they had anything that uh, they didn't want, that's the nicest part. They would have stuff to cheer in our group. Well, they'd give it to you. And you'd have that. But people went on not bothering about it, not talking about it. Nothing just thought life had to be like that. Uh, are you familiar with the um, True Friends Hall? Well, my husband, my dad, my grandpa, all of them was True Friends. That's what I told you. My grandmother, she got her 250 from the from the benevolent when Grandpa died. And she worked and she had some money, she put it with that. And every time they talk about the house, she always talk with the two friends responsible for her getting that, that house she got. Her. They didn't like, or uh, you used to get two or three hundred dollars like from some society. It wasn't like that. You got uh, two, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying anything, two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars. But what he did, they helped, the members helped. Because what they did, they uh, would bring stuff to your house. They, the men's work and out ditching. Used to, that's all that was ditches out there, gutters or whatever you want to call them. Well, they did that and they cleaned barnyards for people and they did garden for shovel and they did everything in the week. But what they could give you, they would put together the members and bring it to you and say, well, somebody got extra chicken in their yard. They would give mama a chicken when daddy was sick and uh, bring us a, a bottle of milk. You didn't have to pay over 15 cents or 20 cents for it. But the neighbors we had next door, um, Ms. Oma used to send us two gallons of milk. But now we didn't have a, a, a box to keep these things in. Mom would buy nickel ice and she'd wrap our, our ice with paper and a piece of rag and put it on top and then cover it over. That kept that cool, you see, for, for us. And the other milk, if she had extra milk, which she'd put it in the safe that had, had wire screen like on this thing there. It put that, that was in the safe. And she would put, let put the milk there and let it clabber. And sometimes we would take the clabber because we like clabber. But the clabber would make the, the the cream cheese. So the next day she would pour it over into uh, a bowl and it's hard. There's some more clap, there's more water then. And then after that, the, the third day sometime, it, it would be hard and she'd break it up like that. Now we, that's how we got uh, cream cheese. Everybody had their own cream cheese. Everybody. And uh, if you bought a bottle of milk, you take your milk and you pull the cream off the milk. You put that on the side and you take the milk and put it in a jar. And when the water starts coming up on you, pull the water off. Sometimes you used to drink it with, co with, uh, with coffee or something, like the water. But they're saving the cream to make some butter or to put it in the coffee if they feel like having coffee or if they're going to make a cake or something like that. So they, would, they would do that. Did your mom teach you how to cook? Oh, Lord, as we come from a family of cooks. <laughs> I could see all of us cook. Yeah, we had to do that. So every time I look, I got a black pot at home, and every time we put Luann like the rose in it, every time we put it on, I think about the white bean, because it would be my turn to put the beans on. I said, people just don't know how good that black pot could make beans. Now, that, I'm 91. And that pot must be about, I don't know, it must be close to me, or maybe it's about seven years. Mama might have had it before. Maybe she got it, might have been a wedding present, I don't know. But we still got our black pot, my daughter. Our black pot. 
some people couldn't have black things and they say, we'll do this. But they don't have the real uh, pot. They got a black pot. Because you could leave stuff in it overnight and get up tomorrow and heat it and it's still, you can trust that pot. You can't trust these pots they make now. You could die with, with them. They get rusty and all that, you know. And what else we did? We skate on the avenue when we was about 12, 13. They didn't have any uh, traffic like they got now. So about 7 o'clock, you could get on the avenue, 6.30, 7 o'clock, and, and go up and down with a homemade scooter out of, made out of wood. And was the avenue paved or was it? Uh... Well, that's when it got paved later. That's when they started doing that because it wasn't paved when I was small. When I was small, we used to walk in the, the mud and to see going along the avenue like this from a tassel going down. That was planks. That was plank walk, you would call it. The mud come up to it, you walking. All the way back of town going uptown it was planks. Uptown, they paved uptown. I think they paved uptown or they had rocks or something was uptown. But back this way, it wasn't. Because we used to go stand on the corner and look at people going up to town with the cart and horses. The cart and the horse, either one, could, could, uh, could go straight. They had to go like this to keep from getting stuck. Everywhere you look, somebody trying to pull the wheel up or fix the cut or the, or the, or the old, old uh, what you call it, automobile. But uh, the mud was, we used to like to walk in the mud, you know, and put the water there before we go. Now, when I was young and the water was low, uh, my sister and them sometimes, they would go down to the bayou and get, come back with a bucket of water. I knew to my cousin and Lawrence, they would go get water. And mama put flaxseed in the water. And the flax seeds, you know what flax seeds is. It clear the water. And your mama would really empty it into another pot of oh, oh, well, whatever she had. And it would uh, clear it again. Then she set it on the back of the table. I was drinking water, and it was all clear like this water you get here. And we had, uh, we had two wells in our yard. One was for the house. And one was to save if they had a fire. And the first time I could remember, my brother must have been about two or three months over, we had a fire. And Mastretta across the street from us, he was fireman, Mr. Beaner. And he and his sons, Pat and them, would come. They came that night to put the fire out on Christmas night over firecrackers, set the, the roof on fire from a tree. And they got water from out. The, the what you call it, the well, and, and they brought uh, water from across the street because they couldn't get that uh, thing to work. What you call it? That uh, the water that you come through that. But while they was doing that, Mr. Puss or Mr. Bina told them, "Don't break the windows," because his his sons were here, Joe, Tana. Well, I can't think of all of them right now. I'll be calling. She had a gang of boys. On the, by the grocery store, because they used to sell, um, they used to sell soft drinks in bottles, Bima Stretta. And that was our neighbor. Now, they were, they were good. Miss Bina was good with Mama. If she had anything running out or getting low. And another thing, when they don't do that now, if you go to the store to get something, you want the fresh one, you want the best one. But we would go in the store, because we got it, would get it cheaper by saying, I want the, uh, you want a nickel rice, quarty rice and quarty beans, take all day cooking the beans. Because he's going to give you half beans and half rice, but you're going to get more than if you went and, if you want, uh, the, not fresh beans, what we call them. Anyway, one was stale beans, one was something, we had a name for the beans. So the one you chose, you would get more of it. So we would always get that one, so mama would put, put them on at night and put, the, put them in water to let the bugs and stuff come up to the top. We had more beans, but ours would soak at night. I hear them saying soak beans and what to do and all this. 
Well, they're doing it so they can hurry up and get out to the kitchen, I guess. But we did it because we had to eat. <laughs> so that's where it was. Well, I don't know what else we did. What we did so with doggone many little things. We played in the yard a lot. We would take the locusts and take a matchbox and put nails and stuff in it and have them crawl in with them. They would be the horse. You know the little locusts and the grasshoppers? Well, we put, we we ice them up. We put them to a, a, to a little matchbox or something, and they would pull it. But nobody wouldn't think of that now. And we used to play peg. And the way we played peg, if they played peg now, somebody would get killed. Because we had a knife, or either we had an ice pick, or you had a piece of wood from the broom, and you cut that off, make a point on it, and you can step. You throw it down like this. Throw it in the ground you, with the ground wet because we sweat we wet the ground at night so it could be wet so we could pay pay. But you know if children had a knife now or pay, what would they do with it? To get the fight and kill somebody. Wouldn't they do that? But nobody said nothing. We just they showed us how to do it. You take a knife, throw it over your head and peg down. Your peg is to hit the other peg and knock it out the way and get it and let it and throw it out the way and you go back. Play marbles. Go get the bread. We get in a line to go get bread. I must have been about ten when we moved here. Over there, I was about eight. Go down the street to uh, to uh, Facetta and get bread. And when you go get the bread, you brought your marbles in your pocket. <laughs> and Mr. Ralph Facetta. He would put them, um, Ralph, Joe, said, Ralph said, Daddy, he would uh, wrap your bread, but he didn't have plenty of bread, people. But you just had the, 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 up the middle of the bread, and you could put it under your arm, you know, and, you, and shoot razoo. <laughs> but people don't like to talk about it. They say, you talk about all kind of old bills. I say, I don't think that was silly. Do you think that's silly? You didn't know that, did you? Did you know that? Oh, yeah, I, I, I remember the grasshoppers. That's right. They eat up everything. You see, eat the corn in our yard. And we have them this dragon. And you see the dragon fly, you do that too with them. I told her, and I said, but just look at that girl. We would have had some fun when we were small. <laughs> we tied them, fixed them, and they'd be just like that trying to get away and they crawl. <laughs> Did you play, you have balls? Oh, yeah, we had chinaballs. We used to make a pop gun. Yeah, we had pop guns. I got a, a, a grandson now, I want his grandpa to make one. I told him, you better not make that boy a pop gun. He'll be breaking, he'll be breaking somebody glass. Tell him you don't have the kind of wood. You see, you got to use that elderberry wood to make that pop gun. The tree, you know, you break up a good piece and slice it down the pop gun too. And you take the, people used to go take piece off a of people fence when they saw a good piece to make <laughs> the gun to go in. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we had good time. I don't know what children said they had, but I know they can't forget that because everybody did. That's the only thing we did. We played uh, rope. We jumped rope. I would skip rope out in the, in the road. We, um, what else did we do? You ever catch crawfish? Well, crawfish used to come down through our, uh, in front of the house. We had ditches, deep, deep cutters of ditches. And that would have crawfish come down. It would have, you know, like the river shrimp come down. We'd be like three and four. But the only reason I guess was the water might have came from the river. I don't know. But uh, we couldn't, we didn't eat it because people had these sewage things in their yard. And that would run through the street on rainy days. They would open up whatever they had in their yard and then just run all the way down. Now, people was able to cover this in their spots, but those like us, we couldn't do that. So it would float from the corner all the way down in these big uh, ditch. And if the weather would be bad, they had a, everybody had a bridge in front of the house. And if the weather was bad, the, the rain would bring, run in through the town and it raise up the ditch, the, the, the bridge. And your bridge would float in front of somebody's house, so you had to make a long street to get to your house. Or, uh, you know, a long. And uh, 
that was kind of rough there because we would be glad, we, uh, we hope it don't rain because daddy wouldn't be there to tie our bridge or fix our bridge or to get somebody to, get the, to fix the bridge so it could stay to the bank. And we used to sit on there and play, uh, play in it. And like Mastretta, uh, Mr. Bina Mastretta, when he, uh, when he would open the fire, the fire station, would open the clean the things out on different corners. They would open uh, uh, these, these things with the pipes, where they run to, to, to put the fire out. They would open once certain times a year. And everybody go out there and get wet. That was the water we got, you know. Because we had to save our water to, to drink. And we had, I told you about the well, and we had two troughs for the horse, and we had two bells for the house. But after the rain, Mama would put um, the flag seed in it. And we used to clean a cistern, I think, twice. We, we had two cisterns. Because one cistern, we didn't use it. And the well, we didn't use it, use, waiting for fire. But we had one cistern we used for water. And we had one well we used for water. And we had horse, horse troughs for the horse to drink water. And they could get them out the bells. And the end of the house, they would always have two bells. And that would be something like that. So when you got older, uh, did you get married? Did I get married? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me about, tell me about uh, my church. How, how, how did you meet your husband? Right here. He, he was born in Donaldsonville, too. My, my, my mama and his mom and dad, all of them was friends. So nearly everybody was raised together, seemed like, uh, you know. Well, her grandpa came from uh, Napoleonville and uh, met her grandma, but daddy met mama through here. But there's so many things you could say about Donaldsonville that people don't talk about. It, it, you, listen, you sit down and listen to people talking, and you say, you know, such and such a thing, they don't never mention that. Now, if you from here, yeah. where, what's your name? LeBlanc. LeBlanc. You know Richard LeBlanc? Richard LeBlanc? He's worked with Larry Boyd. No, 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 no. I, I know Mr. Louis LeBlanc. Louis Boo LeBlanc? Oh, I know Boo with a little bit, so yeah, I know Boo. <laughs> 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 Boo and his wife stopped home a couple of times. I believe she might be sick if they don't stop that like they did a couple of times. Yeah, I know Boo. Uh, well, his daddy was the one was a policeman. Oh, his dad was pulling him stayed right across the street from us. And my, not her, yeah, it was her. Couldn't, twice he had to come home because I couldn't find my baby. But she was in the bed and the bed was shoved beside the wall. And she slipped, I guess, kicking. I didn't know she couldn't move around. You know, babies do things when you're not around. And then we couldn't find her. And I always thought of Mr. LeBlanc. I, I called him Mr. Lewis, but Lewis is his brother, I think. Boo dead and him, something else, I think. And uh, he come running around there, he said, Lord, what happened? He said, I don't know what happened to the baby. The baby and all of them first in July, all of them looking for the baby. Who, where's the baby? The baby not there. Thought I wasn't taking care of my baby. But she scoot behind the bed like this in the wall by the window. And he come in there asking us questions and we cutting up crying. And all at once the curtain moved like that. And she could have smothered. She done scoot back in the, in the corner in the bed, and when he saw that, he reached down in there, and he took his leg and pushed it over, and that was Lil Ann. My baby, she must have been about, well, maybe five, maybe five years old, just at the time when babies can, can get around. And the other, my